was cutting some glass and it didn't really come out exactly the size that I wanted. Even for as many times as I've done this, I'm not very good at cutting glass and it just never really comes out straight. Uh, it's just a total crapshoot, which is probably one of the reasons why I bought my glass grinder. But Layla was asking, you know, what to do if you don't have a glass grinder. I know you could do it with um, a Dremel. So I made a bunch of lousy cuts and I thought I would give this a try and just see how easy it really is. So I definitely am going to wear some safety glasses. These ones, so you can see those. These ones are made by 3M and they actually have like a little bifocal kind of thing so that you don't have to wear your glasses underneath. This is one way I would try it if I had the little thing charged up. I'm not sure it'll go fast enough, but I got this for under $20 at Walmart and I like that it's cordless. It's a super low power. Anyway, so I think I will use this one today. This is also, this is a lithium ion Dremel stylus, which I really, really like. I've moved my little Dremel workstation out into my workbench on the garage. And this is the only Dremel now that I keep here on my little indoor studio. Okay, so let's put a bit on here. So I think that's a diamond bit. I think I'll try that. This, I think I got this for this purpose, but it's way too fat. This is probably a quarter inch, which would go in a regular drill, which you could also try. It'd be kind of bulky. So let's give this a go and see what happens. Okay, I always get people when I'm when I'm trying something to see if I could possibly make something work. I always get, you know, like tool snobs telling me what a dumbass I am. <laughs> and uh I'm not I'm not pretending to be an expert. I'm just experimenting with what I've got. You know, I don't have a I have a husband, but <laughs> I don't have a husband that takes over and does stuff for me when I get crazy ideas. He certainly would not get involved in this. He does cook though, so I'm not complaining. Okay, I can tell you this works really good. This is working really well. Nothing's flying up. It's not cracking. I don't even think I need that sponge. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is working good. I'm excited to post this. Let's give this a go. It's kind of hard because I don't want to stick my head in the picture. I think you get a better result if you just keep the tip and the glass wet and then lift it up and watch what you're doing. You can see the glass kind of the powder like kind of making a little paste right here which is a pretty good sign that it's not flying up into the air if you're getting like a little white paste on the bottom of it. I don't want that little point on the end thing in here and the reason I'm using this instead of the workstation is because I feel a little safer using a cordless. When I have my hands in water. Okay, so it's kind of chewed up. I don't really care. All I care is there's no sharp edge and that it's the right size and shape to make a, a good match with another piece of glass. You could make it perfect, but you're wasting your time. Once it's all covered up with copper tape and solder, it really does not matter one tiny bit. And you will see that with the end result. I like this. I, I'm, that is a diamond bit. You know, they're really not that expensive. I'm sure diamond bit sounds expensive. Let's try this kind of just standard grinder bit here shall we? And let's see how this does. Because I'm just not that good with the glass cutter, no matter how careful I am. I mean, look at the one little cut I'm making, and I can never even get it straight. So, you know, people would really tear me apart if I tried to make a video about that. So uh, this is just, you know, I was throwing away a lot of glass for that, and so this is just a good way to try to salvage some of that glass. Let's try this out. I think this works too. It doesn't work as fast as the diamond bit, but it is taking some off. I think it almost works better than the diamond bit. 
it gives you a little more control. I mean, it's pretty chewed up on the end, but I don't see how that would be a problem. You know, for all I know, you could just take a nail file and do this. Let's see how that goes. This might be too rough, but get this wet. This is just a nail file from Beauty Secrets. Let's see. Okay, this one's got a little point. See, all of mine come out with this little gumby head shape. It's driving me nuts. So, if you ask me, you may not even need a Dremel. Just a little thing of water, a sponge, and a... I mean, this probably isn't going to last. It, it, you know, this is probably going to start peeling up from the little foam center. But, girls got to do what a girl's got to do. When you're in the middle of a project, I think you can sacrifice a nail file. I think that's too gritty. You could also use... You know what you need? Wet, dry sandpaper. Uh, if you're at Walmart, you can get that over where they sell, like, automotive. Like, they have the stuff for automotive painting. It's kind of weird that they have that section. And they have wet, dry sandpaper there in uh, all kinds of grits and grits that get finer and finer. And uh, you could get, like, 800 or even 1,000. Well, you, you wouldn't want that for this. But uh, this says washable and sanitizable medium 160, 180 grit. So uh, maybe it's not going to pull apart. But it'd probably be cheaper if you get the wet dry sandpaper, which is not all that cheap if I don't if I remember correctly. But it's cheaper than buying a glass grinder if all you're trying to do is something like this. So the purpose of the water is just to keep the dust particles from being airborne and going into your lungs. But it's also going to keep it cool, so it serves a dual purpose. Oh, here's like a really nasty looking shape. I'll try it with this grind grinder bit. It's working good. Okay, it's working good, but it's taking a little longer than I would want. Now remember, please remember I'm using a cordless Dremel here. So now I'm going to put on this uh, diamond bit again. Sorry about the close-up, but my hands are wet, so I don't want to mess with the remote control right now. Okay, so now let's try this kind of super crooked piece with the diamond bit, see if it goes faster. Oh yeah, up a lot faster. like pretty crookedy. It's just hard when I'm trying to film. I can't get my, stick my head very close. I'm trying to keep the tools out of the way so that the camera can catch it. Everything is just not conducive to filming. <laughs> And I think one of the big tricks is just let the Dremel do the work. You don't have to push against it very hard. Just let it rest on there and slowly grind little bits away. Okay, that definitely reshaped it. I mean, oh, that's pretty busted up. And here I might take this. That looks pretty busted. You might take, at this point, a piece of wet, dry sandpaper and just fit, finish the job. I'll see if I have a piece here so I can show you how that comes. Definitely much straighter. That's more usable than the other piece. Unless I was making a Gumby head pendant. Let me show you how that wet dry sandpaper comes. Okay, so the higher the number, the finer the grit. This is wet or dry. You can see wet or dry, 3M. I don't know what grit that is. I bet it's, I would say this is maybe 400 or 600. That's pretty fine. Let's see how this does. And so with this, you could wrap it around something or you get it wet. You can see it's making 
I would use a lower grit, a lower grit than this because this is really kind of for polishing. But I'm just trying to find a piece of wet, dry sandpaper to show you how it works. But if I was really trying to take this down a little bit, I would go with a lower grit. Like what did I say this was? This was 180. I might go with a um, like 200 grit. And then if you want to polish it up, there's really no need to polish the edges up. I mean, you want it to be smooth so it's not going to be sharp as you're putting the copper on. And mainly, I just do this to to resize it and reshape it so it exactly matches the shape of another piece of glass. So I have an even edge.